Good morning, Blueprint Church family and friends. My name is Jackie Taylor, and I am super excited to be with you today as we continue walking through the book of Acts in our Catching Fire series. Today, I'm going to talk with you from Acts 19, and we're going to talk a little bit about obedience. How many of us know that God desires obedience from us? So let's uh, pray and then jump right into the word. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you that you are a good father and that you desire to give good gifts to your children. Lord, I pray on today that you would make our ears open to hear your word. I pray, Father God, that from it we would find your truths, Lord God, and more and more about your character. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, like I said, I'm going to focus on Acts chapter 19, and I'm going to drill down into verses 1 through 10 of Acts 19. And I just want to remind us that God can use our everyday obedience to do extraordinary things in the earth. So what is obedience? I'm a definitions girl. I love me a good definition. And one of the definitions for obedience is submission to the authority of another. Submission to the authority of another. And so as we're walking through the word this morning, I want you to just keep that in mind. Here we go. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions and came to Ephesus. He found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, they told him, we haven't even heard there is a Holy Spirit. Into what were you baptized, he asked them. Into John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling people that they should believe in the one who would come after him. That is in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began to speak in other tongues and prophesy. Now there were about 12 men in all. Verse 8. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly over a period of three months, arguing and persuading about the, about the kingdom of God. But when some became hard and they would not believe, slandering the way in front of the crowd, he withdrew from them, taking the 12 disciples and conducted discussions every day in the lecture hall of Tyrrhenius. This went on for two years so that all the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. Whew, there's a lot in those few verses. So let's begin to break it down just a little bit. So in the beginning, I just want us to kind of look at this in equations. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not a math girl. I have never been a math girl. I will never be a math girl. But one thing I learned as I struggled through all of my math classes um, in middle school and high school was that there are certain things that hold true. I may not like it. It may not make sense, but there are certain things that just hold true. And that if you can wrap your brain around those equations, then math is a little bit easier for you. Truth be told, it never got a little bit easier for me, but that's what they say. Equations such as one plus one equals two. It's always going to be true all day, every day. Let's look at how we see an equation about obedience here in the word. So we have <clears throat> first in the first few verses, we have a question, right? Paul came upon these disciples and he asked them, were you baptized with the Holy, excuse me, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So that was the question. Okay. That was the question. They said no. They said they didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. And then Paul said to them, well, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, but he said that you were to believe in the one that was coming after him. And that is in Jesus. When they heard this, this is when their act of obedience kicks in. It says that when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So that is them being obedient to what John said. So Paul told them what John said, and then they were obedient to do that. What happens in light of their obedience? Well, in verse six, we see them Paul laid hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So there was something that took place in light of their obedience. 
So for those 12 disciples who were disciples of John, we see the question. The question was, were you, bap- were you filled with the Holy Spirit when you believed? Then Paul broke down for them what John said. Hey, John was a baptism of repentance, but he said that you were to believe in the one coming after him, who was Jesus. They heard this and then their act of obedience was being baptized. Excuse me, their act of obedience, yes, was being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's important to note that this was no small thing. In fact, this rebaptism or second baptism is the only notable case of a rebaptism in all of the New Testament, right? And this was done out of their act of obedience. And out of that obedience, what was the result or in light of their obedience, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, when I read this, it reminded me of when I was home with my children. I was a stay-at-home mom for 12 years of four kids who were all one year apart. So that was a lot to say the least. But oftentimes throughout the day, I would say things to my children like, if you pick up your toys now, then you can watch Dora or Diego before you go and take your nap. If you stop arguing with your brother or sister, then we can do popsicles after lunch. What was I saying to them? I was saying that, hey, What you do now, your obedience or lack thereof is going to have a direct impact on what happens later on. And that's kind of what we see here. They were obedient and in light of their obedience, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. This is not the last time we're going to hear about those 12 disciples who were disciples of John. And verse 8 goes on to say, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly over a period of three months arguing and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some became hardened and would not believe, slandering the way in front of the crowd, he withdrew from them, taking the disciples, those same 12 disciples, and conducted discussions every day in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years so that all the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. So here's another equation for us. Here we see an action. What was the action? Paul went to the synagogues. Okay, that was the that was the action. Where was Paul's act of obedience? Well, actually, Paul was being obedient to what the Lord had told him or revealed to him in chapter 18 of Acts verse 9. That Verse says, the Lord said to Paul in a night vision, do not be afraid, but keep on speaking and don't be silent for I'm with you. So basically the Lord was like, hey, I got you. Keep doing what you're doing. And here we see Paul doing something that our mili- my military friends are so familiar with. He was following his last directive. What that means is until you get a new direction, follow the last direction that I gave you. We do that with our kids all of the time. Hey, your rooms need to be clean every um, every Saturday morning. So four Saturdays from now, you don't expect somebody to say, oh, well, you didn't tell me to clean my room this Saturday. Well, what was the last thing that I told you to do? So here we see Paul walking in obedience and the last thing that the Lord told him to do. And so he stayed in this. He went and taught in the synagogue. He stayed there for three months. And it says that some became hardened and began to criticize the way. Paul was so smart because what he understood was this was not about him. This was all about making the making Jesus famous and spreading the word of the Lord. When it says that they were criticizing the way, that is a direct reference to John 14 and 6 when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So even here, Paul understood they're not criticizing me. They are denying Jesus. They are criticizing his word and his kingdom. So after a while, after that three months, he took the disciples and he went away and he went and held daily lectures. No, Paul did not stop teaching. He remained obedient. He just changed his location, but he remained obedient to what the Lord had asked him to do. And what do we see as a result of Paul's continued obedience? Well, verse 10 tells us, This went on for two years so that all of the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. Listen here, not only does Paul exhibit obedience, so we see his action of going to the synagogue, 
his obedience to what the Lord had commissioned him um, or reminded him in Acts 18 verse 9. And we see the result of that obedience being Jesus proclaimed all over Asia to both Jews and Greeks. But here's the thing. Paul here shows us something in addition. Not only was he obedient, but he showed us enduring obedience. This didn't happen overnight. Paul was here for two years preaching the kingdom of heaven. There were people who believed. There were people who did not believe. Those who did not believe, the word says, openly in front of crowds, slandered the way, slandered the word of the Lord. But Paul did not give up in sharing the gospel. And as a result, all of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Do we have enduring obedience? Because see, some of us, disobedience is not our issue. It's that we obey, but then when we don't see the results that we want to see and the time frame that we think that it should happen, we give up. When is the last time that you shared the gospel with someone and you didn't see an immediate conversion or, or you didn't succeed in what you thought should happen and you declared and internally, I'm not doing that again because that doesn't work. When the word of God clearly says that one plants the seed, another waters the seed, but it's the Lord Jesus himself who causes it to grow. What about praying for our family members or co-workers and we don't see immediate change? Do we have that enduring obedience? Paul did, and I think that he's leading by example for us in that way. So here's my question for you, Blueprint family and friends. What everyday obedience what does it look like for us today? In the middle of this pandemic, are we leaning in to get our directive from the Lord? Or are we being so consumed by our limitations and things that we cannot do? What does leaning in mean, Jackie? What is leaning in and getting our directive from the Lord look like? I'm glad you asked that question. That answer for us is found in Matthew 7, verses 7 through 8. Matthew 7, verses 7 through 8. And it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Listen, if you are not sure what obedience looks like for you in this phase, because nothing in life looks the same as what it has looked like looked like in the past, then ask the Lord, seek him. What does seeking him look like? Reading your word, praying, leaning in and listening to the direction of the Holy Spirit, and then being obedient to the thing that the Lord asks you to do. And for some of us, we already know what we need to be doing. You need to be, we need to be, I need to be following my last directive. Maybe that last directive was being present in the life of your roommate or your family. Maybe that last directive was being consistent in your tithing. Maybe that last directive was being consistent in your city group. Listen, just because city groups are happening online virtually now versus in person, that doesn't get you out of the last directive. We have no idea what change, what impact, what revival lies for our families, our communities, or the world on the other side of our obedience. So Blueprint family, Blueprint friends, even in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of not knowing what's going on next, I wonder if you will commit now. I wonder if we will commit now to obey, realizing that it's not about us, it's not about any great thing that's in us because there is no good thing in us because all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Understanding that it's all about the God's intended outcome and his name being made great in the earth. Will we decide to obey? I want to, and I want you to also. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for you. God, thank you that all throughout your word, it is laced with scripture after scripture after scripture about obedience. Ephesians 6, reminding children to obey their parents. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, reminding us that we need to take thoughts captive and make them obedient to your Holy Spirit and on and on and on. 
Lord, I pray that for areas that we've been disobedient, that we would repent, that we wouldn't just say sorry, but that we would repent and have a change of heart and a change of mind. I pray for those of us who know what you want us to do, God, that we would be more determined now than ever to reset, to recalibrate, and to walk in obedience. I pray for those of us who are not sure what obedience looks like uh, looks like for us, that we would lean into Matthew 7 and that we would ask and seek and knock, God, and knowing that we will not go unanswered when we seek you. Father, we're so grateful to you for you. We're grateful, God, for the most outrageous display of obedience ever, which was your son, Jesus, going to the cross for us. He didn't want to do it that way. He prayed for another way, but surrendered to your will. And as a result, we can walk in your salvation today. Help us to obey. Help us to lean into you. Thank you for you today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.